Hello there, welcome along. Talking through your kick for another week and it was a big weekend of racing, particularly in Sydney and that is why Brent Zarafa and Neil Evans are on the show early. We'll get Nick Quinn's thoughts about the uh, Melbourne Mooney Valley uh, meeting in a short time, but boys... Yep. Hello and welcome. Talking Hi, through Russ. your kick again. How was it for you? I think if uh, your Twitter uh, mentions on Saturday were any good, then you've had a fat day. Uh, we had a pretty good day, yes. Uh, I have to say that uh, turnover at our place was probably up by about 600000 on the previous Saturday, so the punters are playing big time. Um, but we found a few winners, and at the end of the day, I think most people in the bar out there at Rose Hill were pretty happy. What about the bar across the road at Ridges is the question that many are asking uh, Brent Zarafa. Well, I didn't get there, Russ. I was working at uh, Rose Hill on Saturday and then I headed across the ANZ Stadium straight afterwards. But uh, my highlight of the weekend was certainly more Joyce. She's come back in uh, fantastic style. And what uh, has been an interesting move in the past or 24 hours since that race is she's eased in betting for the Cox Plate. I cannot work this out. She looked the best she has been ever in her career. I know it was only a trotting can over 1,200, but she has come back in great condition and I think she's still great value for a Cox Plate. Well, we'll mm. wait and see what's going to happen uh, in due course. The Cox Plate and Gay's very strong hand in it. Rap or slap time and uh, due to popular demand, I've been asked to give a rap or slap as well. And I'm going to give a rap to the ATC. Very easy to do that, of course. But some bloke won $30,000 at the races on uh, Saturday. I think his name was Kearney or Carney or something like that. John Carney. Mm. Just turns up and with the promotion of uh, being the owner of the epaulette in the Golden Rose, he pockets 30 large tax-free. That's life-changing. Good so promotion. It, uh, and mm. it, if that can't get people to the track, nothing will. Like, and it's going to continue for the rest of the spring. So well done to the ATC, Darren Pearce, Ian Mackay, all the team. And uh, they are sponsors of the show, but that's a great thing to do. And I encourage other clubs to do the same. Rap or slap, me 11. Uh, rap for me, I'm going to go to Jason Warren, the Mornington trainer. Not just because I'm a, a huge Bell Sprinter fan and he produced the horse and got the job done, but uh, just gets his horses beautifully presented to the races. First and second up, they win early. Good blow good trainer. And had a few issues with the horse. What about you, Brandy Boy? I'm going for a little bit of a contentious one here. I'm going to slap uh, the Racing New South Wales stewards for fining uh, Brenton Abdullah $5,000 uh, and Daniel Gannon got a two-month suspension. I know these blokes aren't angels, but I think uh, for all they've been charged with is spending 13 minutes in a toilet, there was no evidence of them doing anything wrong. Uh, so basically they've been uh, fined for bringing the racing, racing in the industry. period on a mm. Thursday night at 11.15. I, I just don't see how that's bringing... So they've jumped the gun on this a bit because I, I get that feeling everyone thinks that a bit. Yeah, in terms I of... Think well, I think they're finding the penalties on what early. might have happened, not yeah, what exactly, actually that's did what I mean. They've exactly. jumped the gun on exactly. it. Exactly. So I think they, the possibility they will be appealed, so... Mm. Could hear more of it, but it's an interesting situation. You could probably here. argue that's an old man's uh, fine. It's older could people uh, uh, look, judging they, younger people I, for what happens. They in this shouldn't day have been age. there. They shouldn't no. have done it. But at the end of the day, Slap I don't it. think. It, yeah, I don't think it's a it's a fine. Five yeah, grand's a lot of agree. money when you've got uh, young blokes trying to do their best. That's for sure. And yep. certain feature race though on Saturday afternoon, the Golden Rose. Uh, you've seen the replay. We're going to take you through it. The the mm. whys, the wherefores. But it was the Darley boys, uh, the two horses that were pretty much uh, unfancied. Uh, the second last and last. Apple at the outside, Albrecht the inside. Neil, uh, mm. you were on um, Cobain. Cobain in there. In the, and I thought Cobain was a bit disappointed. But the, these two were very strong. Uh, very strong. Very aggressive, competitive riding down the outside. Look, Cobain just... It got, there was a lot of pressure in the race, just wasn't up for the fight. Uh, we read about Nikita. There's Nikita still whacking away in the middle. But, geez, they were strong to the line, these two. And... Uh, uh, big run the winner. Big run the second horse. The thing that worries me is there is three lengths between there, the two winners and Ashikan, who was a $51 pop and was in amongst the speed battle. So what do you take out of the race? Brent? I take out of this race that it was run at a very good tempo and the two horses that uh, got the best run on the map were the best two at the finish. Uh, you saw Epaulette last, um, Albrecht second last back on the inside. They... Uh, they were able to avoid any mm. um, pressure early and then they were able to save themselves for a strong finish at the, at the death. I don't think Cobain's run was that bad. I Personally, I think he's a horse looking for 2,000 metres. Yeah. I don't yeah. think he's got the turn of foot uh, of the likes of um, the winning two. Nikita, uh, Christian Reith said that she'll be better at... Um, 1,200 metres, he thinks, back to he the He got Phillies. nine weeks, did nine metres? Nine metres, nine but, meetings, uh, yeah. yeah, so he's, he's actually bringing his suspension. She through. died in the end, but it wasn't a bad run still, I thought. She, she, she had a few little be, excuses, yeah. but from a punting perspective, uh, interesting betting race, because yeah, it was. it's 230, 220 all the week. Punters, the punters uh, got nothing, the bookies got the lot. Yeah, it was... 
Yeah, mm. it was a, that's pretty much the, the way it would have been because the, the firmers just didn't feed. They dived into the favourite late again, uh, drifted, got right out. But they, well, there was money for a few of those longer price. Your song, Epaulette, yeah, was of course tough. You, of course you can get money for a few of those longer price mm. ones. But we're, going into that race, we're all looking at the fact that uh, there was only weak group racing form. There was no Group 2 winners. I think it was a, the best race was uh, Nikita's previous one. Yeah. And we all were suspect about a filly in the race. We've got to start looking at better form lines for this particular yeah. race. And that brings us to an email because the best form line is obviously Piero. So mm. if you can come within Piero, Epaulette uh, has come out and won. Schnitzelin's come out and won. Uh, they were the only ones that got close to him at two. Should we be doubting this form anymore, says Martin? I don't know if anyone's doubting the form. I, I, I don't know whether... they're giving the place getters a bit yeah, more. Yeah, I, I think Piero form is certainly strong. He's, he's yeah. the benchmark two-year-old. He showed that in the run to the rows. Come back first up and beat a very good field over the 1,200 metres. And mm. going forward, I, I can't see him being beaten in the Bill Stutt Stakes or the Caulfield Guineas. Well, that's uh, the odds on screen now are for the Caulfield Guineas. Neil, um, yep. any interest at that? Not really at this stage. I mean, Piero's just... Two dollars has been short as even money out to two twenty. Epaulette firms, of course, eight dollars. Albrecht nine. I don't think there's any any that, secrets where, in this market, is there? Well, well I'd be I'd cross, cross, cross here, maybe. It'd be interesting to maybe. speak to Quinny. I, I sort of don't know the Melbourne three-year-old form as well as I do the Sydney three-year-old form. But looking at that market, there just doesn't seem to be any Melbourne three-year-olds no. really sticking their head out, to wanted all. to well, sort of challenge these types. Albrecht, I was told, was wound up for Saturday, and mm. will go to the paddock. Spell. So uh, I, I, I heard he's going to probably go to the Stan Fox. There's, there's an option there, but whether that whether eventuates, he's probably to stay in Sydney. But Epaulette definitely to Melbourne. Mm. Okay, mm. and the uh, the beaten brigade. Some of them might uh, avoid Piero and head to the Spring Champion Stakes. Uh, We've got the gloaming uh, coming this week. Up we've this also week. got the spring stakes at Newcastle on Wednesday, which will feature uh, Poirier. It's a done deals going around in the uh, gloaming stakes. Yeah, it's uh, ninth region's runner. likely mm. to back up, um, and then there's an interesting horse there at the thirteen dollar mark. Uh, Luna Rise, Bart mm. Cummings. It's been very, very impressive winning at the provincials. It's past two and. Uh, Gives the impression of a horse that will hit its peak once it gets to 2,000 metres. There's mm. got to be something out there that we haven't seen. The, well, I mean, I Atlantic Jewel and, and the likes only sort of came about uh, late in the late in, or early in the spring. So there's there's something out there that we haven't seen. It's a done deal, for example. Well, it, its two wins have been fantastic at uh, Canterbury and also Wyong. Uh, two racetracks that didn't suit the horse at all. He looked uh, uncomfortable the whole way around. Still yeah. managed to win. Uh, finally gets up to a decent trip. And I think this is a serious horse coming across from what, New Zealand. What about Proverb? I don't know if he's Not good sure. enough. Uh, well, he's sorry. No, no, no. Sorry, I, I take that back. I, I've, I've mistaken him with one of the other Darling yeah. runners. His run was fantastic. It was a beauty. It was a beauty. His run was fantastic. Yeah. Back on the inside. Just don't know whether he may be a f touch flat second up, but maybe mm. the next run after because he was very good fresh he was. Uh, in the 1,400. Okay. Uh, Nikita, what, what, is she in the sack file or is he oh, saver for no. another day? No, is she going to the 1,000 guineas? I, I, can't imagine she'll, I can't imagine she'll run uh, a mile given the way that uh, Christian mm. Reith spoke after the race there on Saturday. She did have a few nicks and uh, get a few cuts, but Christian said, seemed to think back to the 1,200 metres uh, and against the filly, she'd be yeah. uh, pretty stay, So, in other words, stay with her own sex. That's, yes. That was coming from the For job now. anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I sort of, I, I think that's probably the best way to go. Okay, uh, puntersparadise.com.au is our website partner here on Talking Through Your Kick. And uh, week two of the tipping contest. Have a look at this, Neil. Is this uh, bloke TriStar? And I'm assuming yes. it's a guy. 129 cracks. For a profit of one, not 1,000, 18,790 for the week. So he wins the Luxbeck coin this week. Yeah, that's um, pretty good. He wouldn't be worried about the Luxbeck coin if he's if he's earning that much anyway, as much as it's very good. Yes, yes. I will he's preface it. He did jag one at Ballina yesterday, paid 80-odd dollars. Oh, so that, that helps, the, helps that the profit loss. He, he still almost uh, won it without it. Fanfield seconds had 221 tips. and Jeez, they're uh, finding a few between them. They do find Jeez. some winners. Um, <laughs> Just in case. Uh, Just Neil Evans had 211 tips. Uh, we got all of your what? tips that you tweeted. We put them all together you and you broke square. Actually, zero dollars profit or minus for the whole week. Who said that? Oh, we had plenty a, of fun. Calculated it. Jake, eh? That's mate. Apparently, that's the quote from your wife as big, well. Big brother. <laughs> I <laughs> rang her up. I said, "How'd Neil go for the week?" She said, "Broke this, square again. <laughs> broke yeah, square." Oh, no, that's. It's, I tell you, that's a ten-year-old philosophy. Uh, Always break square when you get home. Okay, uh, we'll take a break and uh, we'll have a look at uh, more Joyce's fantastic win straight after the break here on Talking Through Your Kick.